So this question starts off by giving us the equation y equals x squared minus a. We then have a question that's not too long, right? It doesn't quite reach four lines long. It's about three and a half or so. Um, so usually when, with an equation and a relatively short question, we're going to use a strategy called simplify. Not always, but most of the time, like 99% of the time. So that's where my head is going with this. So the question says, in the equation above, a is a positive constant. So that's good to know, just that a is greater than zero. And the graph of the equation in the xy plane is a parabola. Okay, so uh, usually if I saw that, I would draw an xy plane. And, you know, why not? Let's just draw an xy plane here, just in case we need to use that. Um, it tells me it's a parabola. So, you know, there's some things I could say. It's like, well... I probably my parabola my parabola would probably look like this just because this minus a here would shift the parabola vertically down a units so then I'd have negative a there and again I'm just drawing this here just so I have a visual representation of what I'm reading so all of this is part of kind of like translation okay so then the question goes on to say which of the following is an equivalent form of the equation Right, So although we were kind of detoured here by some of the visual stuff when it starts talking about the graph, the question itself just wants to know which one of these is equivalent to this equation. So I don't really need this graph in order to do that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to follow this simplify strategy. So most simplify questions require you to simplify the question itself. However, some simplify questions, like this one, will require that you simplify the answer choices. So in essence, we know that we want y equals x squared minus a to come out of one of our answer choices. So let's just start simplifying them. So choice a starts off as y equals x plus a and x minus a. If I were to simplify that, I'd use the FOIL method, right? x times x, x squared. x times negative a is negative ax a times x is positive ax, and a times negative a is negative a squared. These guys will cross each other out, and I'd be left with x squared minus a squared, right? So that is not equal to x squared minus a, the thing that we want it to be equivalent to. So choice a is gone. Choice b would do the same thing, right? We're going to ask, is it true that y equals x plus square root a? and x minus square root a, is that equivalent to y equals x squared minus a? So we're going to do the exact same FOIL method here, right? So x times x, x squared, x times negative square root a would be minus x square root a. Square root a times x would be positive x square root a. And square root a times negative square root a would be minus a, okay? Anytime you multiply a square root by itself, the square root goes away. So square root of a times square root of a is just a. Then we have this negative x root a and positive x root a, so those cross each other out. So what we're left with is x squared minus a, and therefore the correct answer is in fact choice b because yes, this does in fact match up with what we were asked to find.